This is episode 48 of the Online Playmaker Sessions with video marketing, social media, and webinar marketing expert, Kate McShay. Welcome to the Online Playmaker Sessions. This is the place for the latest What's Working Now strategies from the best online playmakers, the top marketers, the rising stars who are making it happen right now. Every week, you'll get real, actionable lessons that you can take and apply immediately in your business, delivered in short 20-minute sessions. Our focus is your results. Here's your host, entrepreneur, world-class trainer, and marketing strategist, Norbert Orlowitz. Hello, online playmakers. If this is your first time tuning into the Playmaker Sessions, thank you for choosing us. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. And if you prefer video, our YouTube channel at onlineprofitplaybook.tv. As with all of our episodes, we have all the show notes, transcripts, and actionable tips over on the blog. Just head over to www.onlineprofitplaybook.com. You'll also be able to get access to my complimentary five-video tutorial series on building the proper foundation for your online business, as well as several other free trainings, including my Instant Income Multiplier tutorial. And if you're ready to multiply your results fast, check out the premium membership of our online profit playbook, where our guests open up their closely guarded playbooks and walk you step by step through the exact marketing funnels and sales process they use to build their audience, grow their influence, and make sales. Get the coveted online profit playbook today. Just head over to onlineprofitplaybook.com and join the playmakers. A former elementary school teacher, Kate McShay now specializes in training home business owners and online entrepreneurs how to leverage the power of video marketing, social media, and webinars to generate more leads, more sales, and build a massive following online. After struggling for four years in the home business profession, Kate and her husband Andrew went from zero to growing a six-figure business in less than 12 months, leveraging video marketing, social media, and webinars. They've collectively generated nearly 100,000 leads, are top affiliates within two online marketing communities, had their first six-figure launch for their Facebook video ads course, and are currently releasing their latest training course, 60-Minute Marketer. Kate is now a sought-after speaker and trainer who hosts her own live events and traffic workshops. She also facilitates and trains at some of the most exclusive private masterminds in the home business industry, which allows her to help stretch and grow her students through her greatest passion, teaching. This week's online playmaker, Kate McShay. Welcome back, everybody. Episode 48 of the online Playmaker sessions. And today I'm very happy to bring back another one of our former playmakers, Kate McShay. How are you doing today, Kate? Oh, I'm doing awesome, Norbert. How are you doing? Thanks so much for having me on again. It's great to have you back. And uh, it's a good time to have you back because you've got some big things happening. Uh, you've got a new course that you guys have been working on. So we'll talk a little about that a little bit uh, later as we get into this interview. Um, really quickly, because there might be a couple of people here today who don't know who you are yet. So let's just jump in really quickly and give us a quick backstory as to who is Kate and how you got started in this in this industry. Sure. So um, for anybody that doesn't know me, I'm Kate McShay. And a couple of things about me that make my journey a little interesting and potentially different um, that some of you guys might be able to relate to is I started out in this industry back in the beginning of 2012, June of 2012. I was actually leaving my teaching job. I had no plan B. My husband, Andrew, and I were going to be moving across the country Um, He was getting relocated and promoted for his job. And I was at the point um, in my teaching career that I loved teaching. I loved what I did. However, I was getting burnt out. And for the amount of time I was putting in in my day and the amount that I was getting compensated from my job just really wasn't going to be enough for us to pay the bills and have kids at the same time. So I, I was at this crossroads of I didn't know what I wanted to do. And Andrew actually had been building a part time business online upstairs when I was focused in on, you know, hanging out, sipping wine and watching TV (laughs) and uh, had no interest until 
it got to the point where I thought, well, what else can I do? And so he invited me to a live event. I went to the live event, absolutely loved every single person there, loved what I saw um, and made the choice to leave my teaching job and jump in feet first. I failed miserably <laughs> for 12 months. And then after that, there were a couple of things that I chose to do that brought us from zero, um, literally zero, going into the red, um, taking out more from our bank account than we were putting in in our business, and then going and building a six-figure business in less than 12 months. And then three months later, we went from a just a six-figure business to a multiple six-figure business. And now we've been generating a multiple six-figure income um, ever since. And so that's kind of, that's our story that's... Uh, that's that's me in a nutshell. <laughs> in okay, case so I, I really want to want to focus on some. I want really want to talk marketing here today, and really just yeah. kind of get into it. Because um, for those of you who want to learn more about you and kind of your your beginnings in the industry and your struggles, they can go listen to the other episode um, that we recorded, and we'll we'll post a link here because uh, we recorded that a few months ago, and there's some great great lessons that um that you can pick up there. So today, let's kind of continue the marketing, and let's really get into the marketing stuff. Sure. So. You talk about um, let's talk about what you did in that in that time where you started to create success because you said you struggled for 12 for 12 months and then all of a sudden things really changed and picked up for you and you know you started to, to create success and, and just you know take your, your business on a really nice growth curve what were some of the key things that you started to do to create that breakthrough. Let's talk about that first. Yeah, sure. So there's a couple of things that I learned to do that I was actually recommended to do was what to focus on every single day. And so for me in the beginning, when it came to marketing and it came to traffic strategies, traffic was one of the main things that I focused on in the beginning. But what I learned were there were three main components that I had to focus on every single day and to actually produce results and produce this long-term brand and business that I knew I wanted. And so, um, and I know you've talked about this before, Norbert, and um, originally learned it from Mike Dillard, and I've taken it on as well. And, and I'm sure anybody who's watching, you've heard it said in different ways, but it's really three things you gotta focus in on are building an audience, engaging with that audience, and selling to that audience. And hands down, every single time when I started focusing in on that, that's what changed everything for us. Um, I like to call it grow, engage, and promote. And nice. so, you know, that's my, my circular method of what I do every single day and what I started doing every single day when I um, actually started getting results. So when it came to building, I wanted to build a following. So I built a following on one platform. Originally when we started, it was YouTube. And so I didn't jump from one to another. I picked one and I stuck with it. So we started to build a following on YouTube. And then engaging that following, what I ended up doing was creating training videos that would be valuable to those people. And then the selling was recommending out some sort of product or service afterwards where they could dig deeper. So that's the that was the circular method of what I did. And then everything, any day when I woke up in the morning, I was like, okay, what are my three things I'm gonna do today to build, engage, and sell to my audience? And that's what made the difference. Because in the beginning, for those first 12 months, I was in a space of, I like to call them preparation tasks, where I was doing everything possible to prepare to then build, engage, and sell to my audience. But I never got to that point because for me, writing an email took a lot of brain power. Writing a blog post took a lot of brain power and I could never get to the point after I used up all that brain power to then build, engage, and sell to my audience. And so being stuck in this space of not getting momentum and not moving forward, those are the three things, the main commitment that I made in order to really make a difference in our business um, and do it fairly quickly as well too. Yeah, that's awesome when you get focused. And and I love that. We have the same mentors. Obviously, uh, that's what I learned from Mike Dillard way back in, in 2007 uh, before we started MLSP. That was, yeah. and that was the big turning point for me too. When, when, uh, when I learned that, that little formula from him and it, it is, it's such a simple thing. And I think it can really help people to, to, like you said, to stay focused and then just focus on those activities that are going to, 
that are going to do those three things. Exactly. Okay, so right now, what's working for, for you guys right now? I, I know you guys, the last time you were on, um, you shared with us a uh, Facebook video ads strategy that was working yes. really well for you. And I know, I mean, I, I see your Facebook ads all the time come across my newsfeed. Um, so obviously, Facebook ads are are a big thing for you. Um, what what is it? Do you want to talk a little bit about Facebook ads? Is that still your main, you know, uh, sort of audience building uh, lead generation strategy? Yeah, sure. Because I think one of the best things is that um, I always think of my audience lead generation strategies, and then more often than not, it's just what I send them to that changes, um, which is pretty cool. And we have something really neat that we've been testing and working out that's been working really, really well with regards to utilizing video ads. But so one little tweak that we've done with Facebook is I'm always trying to pay attention to what's hot and what's new. Um, not so that I can ride the wave and then bounce off to something else, but that I can capitalize when a social media platform is changing and shifting. Mm -hmm. So I can utilize that because that's typically when it's the hottest. So one of the ways that we're utilizing video right now is through Facebook Live. And there's a really cool method that we actually are utilizing. And again, it's all about, it hits all three of building, engaging, and selling to your audience. So what we've actually been doing lately is doing Facebook Lives, um, typically daily. So I like to do them at least six times a week, if not seven, um, when I have the time. And <laughs> that's, that's a hard, that's a hard commitment. A, that's awesome. Yeah. But I've, yeah. I see your Facebook lives come across my stream. I get your emails. So yeah. I, I see how you're using it and it's it's really effective. I mean, I'm seeing the engagement yeah. and the views that you're getting from it. So yeah. it's really good. Yeah. Yeah. So so I host the Facebook live, right? And there's a couple of different elements in there. So my biggest goals for hosting the Facebook live is continuing to build and foster that relationship between my audience um, and also get them to share it with their audiences so I can get some viral engagement and viral sharing. But in every single Facebook Live, I recommend out something that they can go and check out, whether it's a blog post, whether it's a new webinar that we're doing, whether it's um, a product or service that we have. Facebook is much more lenient with you just sending people over to capture pages or places to register for webinars versus just regular ads right now. So that's the first step that I do. But then there's a little ninja twist on uh, what they're doing with Facebook Lives right now is Facebook is collecting all of your viewers and they collect them into these little like mini lists or mini audiences for you. And so the reason we do so many Facebook lives is so that we can collect these audiences of people who basically have raised their hand and said, Hey, I like you. I like what you've got going on. I find your stuff valuable. Basically tell me more. And so then what we do from there with those mini audiences is we create ads that then send people over to our different products and services. And we found, a huge increase in just the quality of our leads, um, the quality of our buyers, because up front we're doing so much with regards to um, the rapport building inside of our Facebook Lives. And so we're utilizing a piece of a platform that's hot right now um, so we can get a lot of that organic free reach, but then we're also using the paid strategy so we can maximize on it. That's which is awesome. pretty cool. Yeah. When when you're talking about the um, the custom audiences, is is that just custom audiences of people that are viewing the Facebook Lives, or is it something yep. different than that? Yeah, it's custom audiences of people that are viewing the Facebook Lives. And what's cool is is you can pick the amount of time that somebody's watched your video. Yeah. And so um, so obviously, the longer they watch your video, the more into your content they are, the better chance you're going to have of higher quality leads and higher quality buyers. Yeah, and Facebook just collects it for you. So you go into your custom audience space in your ads manager and you literally just select the video that you want to pick and then, or you could pick, you know, five or six Multiple videos, ones. yeah. Multiple. So if you're doing a bunch of trainings on prospecting and recruiting, you can select all those and then recommend out a prospecting and recruiting course. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it's it's awesome, and you know every everyone that we've had on that that talks about Facebook, um, you know that the the strategy again, it's the that three step strategy. You got to build that audience, you got to engage with that audience, and then you sell to that audience. And Facebook Live is just a perfect tool to leverage that. And we actually haven't had anybody talk about using Facebook Live in that way. So yeah, that's cool. that's awesome. I'm glad that you shared that because that's a big tip. I see a lot of. I see a lot of people, a lot of new people too, getting started with Facebook Live and doing it consistently. Some people are starting to get results with it. And this is just another one of those tips that you can add to your business right now, especially if you're already doing Facebook Live, 
just yeah. to take it to the next level. Totally, totally. Yeah. Awesome. Now I know something um, that's been working really well for you guys. And you've been doing this for for a long time, and this is what your new course is really going to be a lot about: is leveraging webinars. Mm -hmm. Now I know that webinars. As soon as we mention that, there's you know there's a lot of people that will hear that and say, "Oh, that's not for me." You know, I'm not I'm not ready yet. I don't have the success. Um, when, when when you approach webinars. Um, who is who is who's who is it for? If you you know to get started doing webinars, who should be considering getting started and doing webinars in their business? Sure. So it's a great question because um, I actually just asked a bunch of my students. You know, before you started doing webinars, or if you're considering doing webinars, what were some of the biggest fears getting in your way? Mm -hmm. And yeah. some of the biggest things that I heard were, well, I don't think I have enough results yet in order to share with other people what I've done. Um, I don't know the process, right, on how to actually work through closing a sale. I'm not quite sure what to say in order to close a sale. Um, and then one of the other big ones is, um, you know, how do you, what's the, what's the difference between educating and selling and what's too much of either one? So totally get it. So if you are somebody um, that's in a business, whether it's affiliate marketing, network marketing, I mean, real estate, um, that has something that ha that you have something that you want to sell. I consider if you've gotten any kind of results, even ser in serious, in all seriousness, even just getting like one or two leads, you have something that you can teach other people, and you have a way to then create yourself as somebody that other people see as an authority, to where you can recommend out a product or service. So the cool thing is, is that if a lot of people think that in order to do webinars, you have to have your own product, right? Or you have to have your own offer. And that's actually not the case. I've seen a ton of my students do really, really well with hosting webinars where they actually build up their team or where they recruit out an affiliate program or an affiliate product. So the biggest thing is just understanding the formula of more important than anything, how to revolve what you're gonna be teaching on around the people that are going to be viewing and getting them into a space of believing that it's something that's possible for them and beneficial for them. So for me, um, one thing if I could go back, um, and this is one thing that I know I would do differently and I know has probably left multiple six figures on the tables, I would have done webinars sooner. Um, but I was one of those people that stood back and said, nope, not me yet. I don't have enough results. Um, I'm not this top leader yet. But the crazy thing is, is that once you start doing webinars, you're viewed as somebody who is a, is a success in other people's eyes. Um, and it's a great way to leverage a vehicle of getting a ton of people into a live event, basically online, in order to market your offer in front of a ton of people versus spending your time individually having to reach out to one person. I mean, when I think about my time, how to leverage my time, webinars is like one of the best ways to do it. Absolutely. Now let's let's talk about benefits and specifically sure. for your business, once you started uh, doing webinars, what did it do for your business? Yeah, definitely. So when we did our first webinar, well, it actually was a big flop, <laughs> which is a good most, thing. Most are the first one. Most are, especially if you don't have a formula. Um, and so for me, it was a flop with, with regards to the expectations that I had. Like I expected I was just going to like hit a home run. Everything was going to be fabulous without having a formula or an understanding of how the process works. However, the next time we hosted a webinar, we actually had our first multiple five figure day just from hosting that one webinar because we had this whole formula that was all set and planned out. And then the cool thing is, is that continually we would repeat the process, whether it was each week or every other week, and each time we would get into the four figure, if not five figure range from hosting those webinars. So webinars alone has created, I would say, um, you know, if not $500,000 um, or more in our business in revenue in just uh, three short years. And that's just through webinars. So we're talking about like 60 minutes time, one day a week and potentially hosting, especially in the beginning, we hosted more to get used to the rhythm of it. But now it's like every other month might be once a month. Um, there's things you can do to automate them now so that you host a webinar once and then it's just 
constantly going on all the time and you're making automated sales, like big automated sales, like $300 sales. Um, so for us, it has been, it was one of the big reasons that we actually went from zero to six figures so fast. If we hadn't done that, it would have taken us longer. Okay. So how do I know if I'm ready to do a webinar? Have you got if So if you are watching and you've gotten results in your business and you have something that you can teach somebody else on how to do, then you're ready for a webinar. All you need is you just need the formula and you need to understand how to say things in a certain way to actually get people to believe in what you're teaching and making your teaching look easy. That's it. It's actually less about how much you teach. So many people want to throw in. I want to teach them everything I know versus keeping it really, really simple and then recommending out a way that they can either dig deeper with you, they can join you and your company, or they can buy a product or service that you learned from. So the other thing too is if you have been through a product and you've gotten results by utilizing that product, you're ready for a webinar. <laughs> you're ready to utilize that webinar as an avenue to sell that product and make commissions off of it. So any time that you've gotten results or any time that you, um, no, no matter how big or how small, you're actually ready, believe it or not. You don't have to be this big top dog um, because yeah. you will. You'll be missing out on tons. You'll be leaving tons of cash on the table. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I totally agree. I mean, uh, they've, they've always been a big part of, of every business that, that I've ever done, absolutely. Um, okay, so when you're starting out with webinars, how often should you run a live webinar? Mm -hmm. And kind of on that question, should I start with live or automated? Yeah, great question. So the cool thing is, because um, I know a lot of people say like, well, I don't have a list or I don't have a team yet or right. I haven't gotten a ton of results, so how do I do this? You could actually, um, if you don't have a list or a team, this is a great way to generate more prospects, to get more leads and actually build an email list of people interested in your products and services. So I would recommend, um, especially with the method that we teach, we actually teach you to promote it on social media. So you're getting people that don't even know you, but you're starting to utilize um, the internet as that avenue and that vehicle and the webinars, the way that you sell and you close your products versus hopping on the phone with people or having to private message people or anything like that. So I suggest starting with live and doing it once a week, especially if you're using it as a list building system. Now, do you have to do once a week? Absolutely not. You could do once a month. However, if you want to start to accelerate your results and get really comfortable with doing webinars, I would totally do it once a week. Um, and then automated after I, I like to give the tip of four after doing four live webinars, you're going to get a really good gauge on, okay, what worked this time? What do I need to tweak this time? Um, and after the fourth one, you get really, really comfortable. And then that's when you can actually turn it into a totally automated process, um, which is something that we've been able to do, which allows us to do up to, um, about $20,000 in revenue each month, just from one automated webinar, which is pretty fun. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Um, so what are some key things that we, we need to think about when we're creating a webinar, right? Mm -hmm. When we're actually, you know, creating the, the PowerPoint slides and, and the layout for it and the content for it, what are some key things without talking about the formula? Cause I know, um, you know, you, you've, you're launching the training course yeah. and there's going to be several free training videos that are coming yeah. out with that as well. that people are going to be able to access for free. So yeah. we don't need to get into all that all that information yep. um, and for our premium members we're gonna kind of dig into one of these webinar funnels that you've got running right now yep. but just as a big picture you know something to consider when we're when we're putting together our webinar idea and concept what are some important things to consider that'll make or break the webinar definitely so <clears throat> one of the biggest things that I can share that I would say is the most important part is it's not about you <laughs> is always thinking of it from the space of someone is coming to attend your live event. What, what can they expect to get from you of value? Because you're taking, they're taking that time out of their day um, between 60 minutes to 90 minutes. And so what can you do to deliver value? That doesn't mean you don't share your story. Um, um, especially with your pro guys, I'll be sharing with them a really great structure on how your failures can actually make it even better for you with regards to closing ratios. Um, awesome. when you're, we've all had a lot of failures. Exactly. Um, so the first thing is that it's really, it's not about you. 
Second thing is the more that you can get people to get into this space of belief that what you have to share, they envision themselves actually doing it or actually seeing those results, the better. Mm. And then the third piece that I always like to say is just keep it simple. When it comes to teaching, I like to teach on like three things. And so say if it was something with regards to um, prospecting, it might be my first thing is my best opener to create a really solid conversation. Then the, my second tip might be three questions that you can ask to reach people's pain points. And then my third tip would be, you know, the final script or the final question I can ask in order to then get somebody on the phone or in order to get someone to see my opportunity. Um, so again, that's really simple, right? So a lot of times I tell people to think big picture and then narrow it down and narrow it down and narrow it down even further to just quick little tips that they can get for value and then you can go into the sale. Um, and the sales process is a, is a whole process in itself that you guys will see through our free training series. Um, however, I would say more important than anything is allowing them to see that in the future this could work for them and create that believability that it's something that's a vehicle to get them to where they want to go is one of the biggest parts. And then giving them a little bit of a taste. That's what I like to think of it as like a teaser or a taste of content, not the whole book, not the whole encyclopedia, but just that taste, just enough for them to go, oh, okay, I get it. And then you recommend out your product or service as a way for them to actually learn more and dive in more and do it with you. Okay. Awesome. Good yep. tips. Really good tips. And I know you'll be doing a webinar uh, with, with this course that's launching. I'm sure there's going to be some webinars that you're going to be doing. Yep. So we'll definitely be uh, watching those webinars and, and taking notes and, and studying the process that you guys are using. Um, all right. So really quickly, let's, um, let's, Let's talk about the the close really quickly without talking about the, the entire specific formula because there's a lot to it. We don't have time to cover it all. Um, but again, just some key tips, again, when we're thinking about transitioning into the close, because I think this is where a lot of people uh, freak out. I was just talking with a client yesterday. She did her first webinar. Mm -hmm. and it was a small webinar. She got one sale out of it, which was really exciting. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, but it's the same thing. Oh my God, I suck at the close, right? And <laughs> we all feel that way because uh, most of us are not born salespeople. Right. So maybe just give us some tips of, of things to consider and think about when we're moving into that close and, and creating that close so that it can be effective and we can feel comfortable doing it. Yeah, sure. So one of the biggest mistakes that I made in the beginning when it came from going from content to then going to the close, and this was something that I used to mess up all the time. And same thing, I'd still make some sales. However, when I tweaked this, this was one of the best things that I could have done. Um, so more often than not, what I used to do when I found other people do is after they finish the content, they just kind of wrap up and they say, okay, so we went over all of these things which basically to the viewer means I'm done, but they're not done. You've got this whole other process you wanna take people through. So one of the biggest nuggets that I ever received and I added into our webinars, that actually doubled our sales on our next webinar, was having a slide that said, are you getting value so far? Um, has this been valuable to you so far? Which then insinuates, I've got more to share with you. Come. And so it's been valuable now, but imagine what you're gonna get next. So this has been valuable, but just wait. So that transition from asking them if they got value, even if even if we've got one person on the webinar asking those questions um, and then putting them into that belief state again, like can you see how easy it could be if you use that one prospecting question and then and then imagine if you use that with 15 different people, how many more conversations you can open up. Isn't that so cool that you learned that? And so then getting them to be like, yes, 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 in this yes state. Well, then the next step is saying, okay, cool. Well, then I've, I've learned a couple of different ways that have really helped me learn how to progress and do this fast. Now, I've done it both ways. I've done it by myself. And that took me longer. However, when I got help from others, that's when I was able to move forward. And that's the reason I created, and you go right into your course, and you go or right into whatever product or service you're recommending. And then the biggest thing that I can share that was really, really helpful for me and has been helpful for my students is starting to just talk about the benefits. 
So one thing that I'll talk about in the training that I'm going to be doing with, um, with your guys, with your pro guys, is a really simple formula of how to take your target markets, um, pains and struggles, and then dreams and desires, and just create these massive amount of benefits throughout your whole webinar. So people can always see from feeling the biggest thing you want to do in this sales piece is make it, make the hard sound easier. And the hard's always going to sound easier with your help. And so making that transition in, into, is there value? Have you gotten value from this so far? Okay. Well, if you want to dig deeper and you want my help, here's how we're going to do it. And then you go through the whole rest of the piece. Um, the last thing I would say that's really, really helpful is, is again, when you're starting to talk about the amount of value that you're going to be giving them, right? And, um, you know, every single price point of what everything would actually cost right after that, when you've gotten to this point where it's like, you know, tons of value, right? They're getting like $10,000 worth of value asking these questions of, you know, if all this did was, so we go back to some dreams and desires. So it's amazing that, um, so many people think that when you're doing webinars, it's all about like specifics of like the features of what they're going to get, but really it's about their belief that it's going to help them accomplish their dreams or accomplish their desires. So if you said, you know, if all this did was help you retire from your job, or if all this did was help you rank advance in your company, or if all this did was just help you get a chance to be home with your kids full time. So you could go to the park every day, whenever you wanted to, then would it be worth whatever value you rocked it up to? Cause then you bring it down to a lower price point and they think it's an absolute steal. So that alone, more important than anything, what I've learned is that getting people into this space of believing that it's going to help them accomplish their dreams and desires is really what makes the sale easy. There's obviously other steps that need to be taken, but that's the biggest thing. And that's what's changed so much for me. But that jump from content to then now I'm going to go into the pitch has been like a total game changer for us. That's awesome. What a, what a great, that was a great, both of those were really, really good tips. Yeah. Um, really effective. And I've seen them work on webinars. Yeah. Um, and they're both really good tips because those are the two places where, where I think most people struggle yep. um, with, with creating their webinars. So that was awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah, and yeah, for premium members or pro members, um, we're going to be, Kate's going to actually be opening up one of her funnels and processes and kind of showing us how that works. You'll definitely want to uh, want to get access to that. Um, and we'll leave links here for the free video training series that uh, you'll get access to as well. Um, so that's really exciting. I'm really excited to, to see what you're going to be sharing there with everybody. You're just such a natural trainer and teacher. <laughs> you just can't, <laughs> can't stop. Help it. Really. It's like, hey, here's this one tip. Oh, wait, I got another tip for you. So... <laughs> You know you're going to get a ton of value in the uh, the video series, so that's awesome. Really excited for that. All right, let's let's put a bow on this because we're at 30 minutes already. Let's wrap it up. Um, I always have um, our playmakers share with our viewers their top three tips for creating a breakthrough. Because obviously, everybody watching right now, they're looking to take their business to the next level, and they yep. want it. They want that sooner than later. So, if we're looking to create a breakthrough in the next 30 to 90 days, what are three key tips you can give people? Yep, three key tips, um, and I'll sum up what I talked about earlier. Three key tips, focus on build your audience, engage with that audience, sell to your audience. Those are the first three things you should be doing in your business day, okay? So that's one tip. Second tip is find an offer that you feel passionate about. Mm. Um, so whether it is an affiliate offer, whether it's your own, whether it's building up a team, whatever it is, find that passion because that passion is gonna drive whatever urgency you have to really take your business up to the next level. And then third is believe um, without any shadow of a doubt that you are ready to be hosting webinars. Because if you want to actually scale your business and do it fast and do it where you create that spike in your leads or your sales or signups, that's the best um, easiest and quickest vehicle to actually get you there. It's just biting the big one and doing it and jumping in feet first and knowing that, 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 that this process alone will help you become a better advertiser, a better email copywriter, a better blog post, um, you know, writing better blog posts, um, closing people over the phone. This process alone will help you skyrocket that. But if you focus on those three things that you have to do every single day, 
and that you pick an offer that you're passionate about and you utilize a vehicle like webinars that helps you get a spike in sales fast, I have no doubt that you won't see amazing results inside of your business. I love it. Three awesome tips. That was killer. Love it. All right, Kate, thank you so much for being here. Appreciate okay. everything you do for the industry um, and appreciate all the, the wisdom and knowledge and experience that you've shared with us here today. Uh, again, congratulations on everything you've accomplished and congratulations on the launch of this new course. It's going to be really exciting. We're all going to be watching and, and taking notes and, and learning from you. So uh, really appreciate you being here. Thank you again. Yes, you're welcome, Norbert. Thanks so much. And uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. All right. Awesome, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Again, take action on what you've learned. Apply it into your business. Check out the links below this video. Uh, on the blog post, we'll have all the links to get more training from Kate and the free video series that she's launching and releasing to you guys as well. All right, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this episode, and we will see you next week on, on another edition of the Online Playmaker Sessions. Take care, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this week's Playmaker Session. If you love the session, subscribe now to our YouTube channel so you never miss our weekly episodes. Be sure to also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Just type in Online Playmakers in the search bar and click subscribe and be sure to leave a five-star review. All of the episodes, show notes, transcripts, resources, and bonuses are available on the blog over at OnlineProfitPlaybook.com along with several bonus free tutorials I've created for you as well. Your fast track to results is to follow the playmakers. You can download their closely guarded playbooks and follow them step by step to grow your influence, build your audience, and create results in your business right now. Head over to OnlineProfitPlaybook.com and join the playmakers to get full access today. Thank you again for joining us today and be sure to tune in next week as we bring you another power-packed session with the top playmakers online. This is Norbert Orlowitz signing off.